And what I want you to do is go on with your life trusting God. We need to live in what the Bible calls the rest of God. It's a special kind of rest that you can have even in the midst of the storms of life. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to have everything figured out. You replace all that with trust that God is good, that He knows what He's doing, and that He will do the best thing for you at the right time. If you ask me, what is it that worries me? I've got all sorts of different worries that um, burden my heart. What do I need to do? Instead of just giving my worries to God, what I wanna do even more is I wanna give my life to God so that I'm hidden with God in Christ Jesus. My whole life belongs to Him. My whole life, everything, I trust Him, I believe in Him, He's good, He's always faithful. And some are gonna say, well, that's irresponsible. You're just living in denial. You've gotta be more responsible than that. Now, here's my philosophy, and you may adopt this into your own life. Three big thoughts. First of all is this, I wanna do what I can do. Would you say that aloud? I'm going to do what I can do. You can type that in the chat, those of you online, come on. In other words, if you've got an exam coming up, you're not just trusting God for your exam. What are you doing? You're studying. You're, 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 you're studying. If you want to get in better shape, you're not just praying about your health. You're going to eat right. You're going to exercise. You're going to get good advice. You're going to do what you can do. The second thing is we're going to give God what we can't do. Somebody say that. I'm going to give God what I can't do. If I can't do something, I'm going to trust it to God. I'm giving God what I can't do. First, I'm gonna do what I can do. I'm gonna give God what I can't do. And finally, I'm gonna trust God no matter what, because of who He is, because of His character, because of His nature. But being frustrated about how long you have to wait will not get God to hurry. God gives us dreams and visions, or I just put hope. He gives us hope for change. We want to change. We want to see our loved ones change. We want to see the world change. We want our finances to change. There's always something that we want to change. And God is in the business of changing things, but He never tells us when. Why does God withhold information from us? Why doesn't He just tell us why, when? Well, a handful of reasons. Number one, if we knew how long we had to wait, <laughs> so God uses this little word soon. <laughs> Moses had a desire to deliver his people from the bondage that they were in as slaves in Egypt. And he went to the desert for 40 years in the wilderness have you ever noticed that when you're waiting, sometimes you feel like you're in the wilderness? And what was he out there for? For training. I wish God could train us on a mountaintop, but it seems he always has to do it in a furnace or a wilderness or <laughs> a desert or at a job we hate or, you know, something like that. Joseph waited 13 years in prison for something that he didn't even do. He wasn't even guilty. But he also got favor in prison. And no matter where he was, he got favor. And see, that can happen to you and it can happen to me. If we learn to wait with a good attitude. God, I'm gonna do what I can do. And God, I'm gonna trust you, casting my cares upon you and give you what I can't do.